He might not be able to switch on. So, um, call the meeting to order. The February 26, 2018 Planning Board meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes for the January 16th uh, meeting. Any errors or omissions? No, motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. Second. Peter seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Next item on the agenda is um, 19 Wells Road Communication Tower, and I'll turn that over to Joe. Okay, um, Global Acquisitions 4 LLC is requesting that the application for site plan review, a resource protection permit, and shoreland zoning review to construct a 180-foot tall telecommunications tower to be located in 19 Wells Road be tabled to the March 20th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Um, is there any discussion, question? Anybody want to? I'm just curious, do we know why, or is that appropriate for this time? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, the uh, town staff, including myself, met with a representative of the applicant. Um, I think it was uh, early this month, and they are actively working to revise their plans and have asked for additional time to get them ready. That's what I figured. The last time I spoke to them, it was their intent to submit for the March 20th meeting. Okay. Right. okay, so would someone like to make a motion? Uh, I got a motion. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that, that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Global Acquisitions for LLC for Site Plan Review, a Resource Protection Permit, and Shoreland Zoning Review to construct a 180-foot tall, 180 tall telecommunications tower to be located at 19 Wells Road be tabled to the March 20th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Do I have a second? Victoria, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor? It's unanimous. Next item. The next, the next item on the agenda is um, 1200 Shore Road Private Access Way Amendments. Alex and Brian Fisher are requesting amendments to a previously approved private access way for a lot located at 1200 Shore Road to allow a perimeter fence to be installed along the property boundary and a gate for the access way. Section 19-7-9, private access way is review. And Ben, is yes. that correct? If you would like to introduce yourself and give us an overview. Um, before we start, is, is anyone else getting a lot of feedback yes. on these things? Is there anybody? I can, all I can report is when I was having a conversation with the town manager this afternoon, the IT manager inserted himself briefly to say he got the new mics installed. So I'm guessing where the inaugural use of the new microphones and all I can say is push them back and I will report this to the IT manager tomorrow. Yeah, another roadie to come out and kind of do adjustments on the fly. A little bit. I don't have turn a down the volume. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a volume that you can turn down, that will, that will do the trick. Yes, there is. I do know these monitors, I love these things because it makes, you know, for people with hearing aids, it makes it a lot better to hear things. Yeah, even that may be feedback if you can turn those down. No. Yeah, no, yeah. There's a switch on the top. Yep. There's a button on the front and the center. Yep. I am a part-time musician. Oh, that's how you know this stuff. Um, my name is Ben Trout, and um, I'm president of Trademark Incorporated, a small general contractor located across from Petro's. Um, and I'm working on this project that was just permitted for a house and a barn at 1200 Shore Road. And the um, people bought the land um, 
It was carved out of the land trust, so it's surrounded. It's kind of in the, the middle of 17 acres. Uh, and um, they have an easement from Shore Road to get to it. I think it's, I think that road is like, eight, the drive is like 800 feet long or something like that. And so it's very private. Um, however, and the lot um, has a 30 foot buffer around it inside the property. And so the client is very interested in having what is called a split rail fence, which is a very um, rustic and natural fence. It's just basically posts and a, a lot is actually split. And there's a couple of these fences on Shore Road. There's one in front of them, grass, is just up the street. And the reason for them wanting to do this is that they are having, um, this is their house, and this is the barn. And I'm just going to it kind of shows, this is the shore road here, and the easement coming in, and the driveway coming into their property. And so what they're trying to create here is, is, a, is a farm. And this fence is very much in keeping with the farm aesthetic. They do plan on having horses, and I don't think the primary reason for this is to, to um, corral the horses, but um, they're very interested in creating an aesthetic, and they're interested in um, just knowing where their, their, their property in terms of how it relates to the land trust, because the land trust are appropriately you know, stu the stewards of that property, and they're not supposed to, you know, wander onto that property except in one specific place where they can have a path down to their another lot that they own um, down here on the water. Um, so this type of fence is very natural looking. Um, you know, wildlife can travel under it, through it, over it. Um, we propose to have the, well, it's already been professionally surveyed, but we would make sure that, that, should, that to have a surveyor come back and do um, the one foot inside the property, we put this fence. And I've already been out there with a string, and it's really, really favorable to missing trees. If we do, if there is a tree in, in the way, we would either stop the fence on the side of the tree and continue it, or we just so we'd be able to do the buffer, I mean we'd be able to do the fence without taking down any trees. Um, the other nice thing about the fence is that it gives you a constant place to, um, to, to measure off of in terms of maintaining that buffer. Uh, the client is interested in, is happy to do more trees in there, they'd, like, they'd actually like to plant more in, in the buffer. Um, so, at the, when we did the workshop, there was some talk of, you know, perhaps putting a, a piece of marker on the, on the buffer so that um, the present owners and future owners would be able to identify the, the border of the buffer as well. Um, we'd be amenable to that. Um, the only people that really have a view of it is uh, Paul Farrell and the Farrells that live here. And, you know, they're looking pretty much you know, 800 feet, you know, through some tree screening. Um, but I really don't think it's that sound very well. These people, there was a house that was just built, I think it was here. Um, and the same thing, it's just heavily screened. You know, there's a lot of woods in between there. So, but it's really just kind of to give a sense of, of where the property begins and ends. Because when you do have that buffer, you kind of don't really know where your property ends. And it's kind of a fuzzy zone, you know? Where, so once the fence is in place, um, you know, they will be able to just get <coughs> the trust, keep them happy. Um, they have a one daughter, they have two on the way, which is kind of exciting. And um, they'll just kind of, you know, just you know, know where their space is. And I guess that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Um.
as part of this evening's um, meeting, we're going to open this for public comment before the before the board asks any questions. And just as a formal formality, I'll open this for public comment. If anyone would like to comment on this project, now's the time. Please. Please come to the podium and give your name and address. Is this going to give too much feedback if I stay here? We uh, we'll find name, out. My name is Chris Tolman. Uh, I live on Stony Brook Road, 47 Stony Brook Road. I'm a board member of the Land Trust, so we came as uh, the neighboring abutters to sort of see what was planned. Um, it sounds like the split rail fence is going to be entirely on their property, so. That's not an issue for us. <laughs> there was some discussion about a uh, fence gate. Was that going to be by Shore Road? Or was that going to be on the property? On the property, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we think it's actually really good for our relationship, or the client's relationship with the Land Trust. You know, just so that we know they don't want to go out Okay. Trust. I'm sorry. Just. Oh, sorry. Yep. Will, are there any other? Let's do the comments and then we'll do the answers to the, to the comments. And I'm sure that question was coming up from the board as well. About the location of the gate is. Are you all set? Anything else? Any other comments, uh, questions? As stewards of the stewards, I'm on the stewardship committee as well for the land trust, um, and we've been monitoring the property, and they seem to be staying in their property. Seeing no other other audience members for comment, I'll close the public comment section and we'll move into answering the questions and addressing board members' questions. So, anyone here want to kick it off? Go ahead, Jonathan. So there was, uh, when you guys came to the workshop, there was talk about some offense along the drive and- Just totally, we can't do that. Okay. And then the um, there was a talk about gate on Shore Road. That's not doing that either. No, the only way that that would happen is if uh, uh, my client sent me a photo of of a gate that's on Shore Road that appears it's, it's on the city town property, and so. But I don't think that that can happen. It would not be a gate. It might be two posts if they allow us to have something to announce where the driveway is, just so you can see it, the location of it. But you can't have a gate right up on the street because it'd be dangerous. No way to wait for it to open when we pull in. So, okay. so it's a non issue, right? It's a non issue. Right. Thank the you. gate that we do up here, you know, it'll swing into their property, so, um, you know, won't go out and be honest with the easement. Okay. Ben, I know we get feedback. Could you get just a little closer to the sure. microphone? <laughs> could, could I follow up on that? You can. I, I just want to, I want it on the record that you said that you weren't putting the gate on Shore Road because whatever. If you decided you were going to put the gate in the right of way of Shore Road, it would get you out of the limitations from Selt because you weren't in the driveway. But if you were going to try to do that, it would still need to come back to the planning board because that would be a substantial amendment to the private access way permit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Victoria? Oh, I was actually curious, Maureen, um, does this go to the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds? Does anything get filed? Well, technically this is an amendment to the private access way permit. And the private access way, when it was approved, was recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Because there's no change to the actual driveway, we wouldn't normally require this be re-recorded. Okay, I just want to know what the level of standards I'm going to now address will be, the tough ones. In, in my opinion, you know, an approval by the planning board is an approval, whether or not it's recorded in the registry of deeds. Okay. All right, so I have a few questions. Sure. Okay. Um, okay, let me just answer that one. Okay. Oh, I, I, this, I did not understand. Dan, the note that said, 
proposed stone monument at property corners typical for five. Okay, yes. What does so, that mean? So instead of having a lot of posts on the, on, um, on the corners, we do a granite post. Okay, for five, there's five yeah, corners? Yeah, there's five corners, yeah. Okay, I kind of four. Can you just... There's one little guy. Um, Can you right? count out where the four would be, or? about that. In your letter, you said um, install granite posts to be six by six. Yeah, and then these posts would be six by six. Six tall? Six wide? No, 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 no. Six, six inches by six inches. Six inches. Six inches. And then they'd be, you know, four feet high or whatever. Okay, you missed just... a little inches. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, no, sorry about that. If anyone's seen that movie. Okay. So, and that's okay. just, I don't know why I want to do that, but that's so how would that look? So you have the fence, which is not supposed to, I read that the uh, code enforcement officer doesn't want it to be actually on. Right, it has to be stepped in. Stepped in. And yeah. then where are these posts going to be? Are they also going to be stepped in they slightly? Be, yes. Okay. And then so, the pins are right outside of the, of the granite posts. I mean, you, you can see, see the way it's been surveyed and they're, you know, they're, they're clearly visible. So the, the fence has to step in. Okay. It's so the offense, <coughs> six, and then post, and then, so they're just, they're all yep. lined up together. Post is not actually the boundary marker, it's just a, uh, just a little bit, stepping it up a little bit in terms of design, I guess. Okay, um, thank you. Um, let's see. So you did mention that you are willing to put some type of boulder, because we had discussed well, that, but there was nothing on the plans either depicting where they go, their size, the numbers, yes. there's nothing here. So I, I mean, I'll be clear that we would rather not have to do that, and that's why I was more of a, something that was brought up to me at that workshop, um, you know, that the fence is very important to the client, so if we have to do um, we might be willing to, you know, to discuss that with you. Um, what I was thinking would be nice is, I mean, again, you, you're going to have these clear lines of sight, and it's not like, like all of a sudden the buffer is just, this is all going to be desolate in here. I mean, they want to plant trees so that it feels like the buffer comes in and out of the, you know, that it's not just kind of forced, and if they could, they would, you know, mow down any scrap that they possibly could. Um, this, this is going over time, this is going to, that buffer is going to kind of wander in. They really want to do some fruit trees down here they're talking about. And there's definitely going to be some sort of tree cluster in here. Um, and again, yeah, like they would like it to, that buffer to not be so, you know, cons contrived and strained. What I was thinking would be nice to do is to mark the corners with what I've seen, um, um, like you'll see it when the when a latitude and longitude is located somewhere. So it's just a granite, a piece of granite that's flush with the earth, has a piece of metal in it so that you can find it if you if for whatever reason it gets covered over time. And I will do those in the corner and probably one in between. And really it's when you get down to it, this is obviously a long-term project for these, you know, this is their homestead. And, and if they do sell it one day, they're going to have to communicate that the buffer exists, and you you can you can let the new owners know that um, they can either measure off that fence to maintain that buffer, or that there will be these markers in there. But to me, to you know, to put boards around the, I mean, people are going to want to get rid of those. I mean, they're just. They're not going to work for the aesthetic of the farm. I think that something that will really work over time would be something that's flush with the earth, like I said, that has a piece of metal because you can find it. The client is on, you know, my client's on them to maintain that buffer over time, and I know that they intend to do that. Because as I said, they, I mean, this place is, it's cleared right now, and it's, there's blasting going on, and the 
it looks like you pray. But um, over time, that buffer is going to look like it wanders in, into this, and it looks like a more natural environment. And so I think if we did a step, just something flush with the ground, that that would satisfy you that it is marked. But really, it's really the integrity of the, of the, of the owner to maintain that stewardship of the buffer. And I, and I really, I really can tell you that I believe that they're going to do that. That I'm not, um, I mean, I've worked with these people over the years, and um, they just they have a, a really nice sense of aesthetic, and I know that's what they're going to want to create. Okay, I would prefer some uh, boulders because of uh, past projects we've worked on, but I'd like to throw this out to the board. You're hearing what they're proposing. I would prefer boulders, so I'm just curious what other people think. Go ahead, Jonathan. Um, in, in usual circumstances, I would be thinking um, along the lines of Victoria with the boulders. Uh, however, i, I got to remember uh, that the property that's surrounding this is Cape Land Trust, and the interest of Cape, Cape Land Trust is maintaining their land. So I think they would probably be the ultimate sort of watchdogs of their own property that's surrounding this property. And if they saw that there was a problem, if that the buffer was disappearing from this property by these owners or even owners down the road, um, that they would most likely contact the town and get code enforcement down there. Um, so this wouldn't be a situation where um, it's sort of going to be an absentee neighbor that the landowner is going to be able to do whatever they want, it's actually going to be a very active neighbor, I would believe, um, not to put it on Cape Land Trust, but I would think that that would make me feel a little bit better. I do like the idea of having something kind of permanent there. Um, the, the flat rocks seem kind of like a good thing to use when it comes to uh, something more permanent than um, just doing, just uh, than maybe having the large boulders, but we have been doing a lot of boulders recently, so to keep that precedent, I think it's something to think about too. But in this case, I think with the with the land trust <coughs> being sort of the ultimate people who are going to be watching, then uh, the land, this property owner and the future owners of this property are going to have to maintain that buffer, or they're going to get a visit from the town. Yeah, I mean, over that skip. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to think along John's lines that given the size of the parcel, the particular setting where it's surrounded by land trust land, <clears throat> and that it's a basically a quasi-farm type of situation, house, barn, uh, horses, and this type of thing, I, I think the monumenting the corners with a flat marker would suffice. The boulders have been more in the context of trying to remind people that they can't take their lawnmowers and extend the lawn, you know, surreptitiously into the into the boundary area. So I I would be personally happy with just the monumented corners and not require boulders. I have a question. You talk. You mentioned that the area right now is pretty much. Uh, Clear cut, but when you say it's clear cut, you mean with inside the 30 foot setback. Yeah. So the you, what's what's in the setback is it still trees? What is in that 30 feet between the property line and the setback? Is that still forested? Yeah, it's just kind of scrub trees. I mean, it was there's not that was a pretty that lot was pretty thin actually, and so I mean like. Like in here, it's like it is kind of grassy. Up here, there's a lot of, uh, you know, like I don't know if it's blueberry sod or it's some sort of a ground cover. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think that over time, I mean, when you, when you, they're not going to mow in here, but you know, they're, um, if, you, if you do have grass out here, it's going to it's going to go seed in there. Mm -hmm. That buffer is going to change over time, but they can't go in and mow it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, in my mind, what will make the buffer look better is if there is ground cover in there, so you don't have like a hay field in your buffer, but you know, that blueberry side is very, very pretty. I guess where I'm kind of going is, I understand what you're saying about how these people want to maintain their property, 
but if something needs planning board approval, now's the time to get it. So it's not the time to say, I think we might want to do this. It's the time to say, this is what we want to do, and this is what we want to put in here. Um, so that's, that's kind of where my brain's going. So. Well, I mean, if I could, I mean, what I've been proposing, if you guys want to have us to do the, the, the markers, is that I would, I would know that I can even say wholeheartedly that we would be totally on board with doing those flush. And we're, they're, not, they're not little flat things. I mean, they would be like substantial, like, you know, you know, eight or 12 inches thick and located on, on those corners and probably one in between with the metal so that you can find it. And then I would take a step further and ask for permission that we, and I think we can plant inside the buffer. We can add trees. I, I, I've been asked this question and I've said yes. Absolutely, okay. yeah. you can if add you to the buffer. That would be great. But if I could just, what I need to make clear because some people have misinterpreted this in the past is the idea is that you would preserve the duff layer. So you rake the duff layer aside, you put in your additional plantings, you put the duff layer back. So the, the addition of trees and plantings shouldn't be used as a way to expand the lawn area. Right. So, I mean, that would be the, the two things that I'm willing to, I, I don't know if it's really a concession, because I think it's a positive. They're allowed to add trees with just without removing that, you know, existing cover, as you're saying, and, um, and to have those flat markers. So you're proposing that there would be pins to mark the boundary, there would be granite posts in as part of the fence to mark the corners of the fence, mm -hmm. and then on the 30-foot setback corners, you would put other markers. Did I right. understand that correctly? Yeah. And how would you differentiate the setback markers from the boundary markers? Because these, this will be the boundary. The boundary markers are outside the fence, and so by you know, again, you have to tell the new people that these markers exist and that there's a buffer, and, and that you, you know you can kind of you know mm -hmm. they grow acquainted with where they are and where the other one is, and you know. And again, it just gets into integrity, really. I mean, because oh, you yeah. can have boulders and yep. mow around the boulders. You know, you're either going to abide by the law or not. But the, the other nice thing I like about that fence is that, um, I mean, these boulders, I mean, the, these markers that I'm proposing, um, I, I think, great, with, with that fence there, you can always pull a taper. But I don't think it's going to get to that point. I think that, I think that what they're really interested in is that kind of blending into the um, into the building that we built. And this pond obviously is a feature that they're trying to, you know, add to the you know feel and vibe of the place. Yeah, I noticed that. But so this it's is not part of what we need to prove. The so. They're the guys that did um, the wonderful waves. Are there any other questions? Go ahead, Victoria. Um, I thought I heard something about a light fixture at our... Yeah, that, that's just... I think it's going to be taken up the bed. It's just a mailbox. And if they can, they'll put a light on it. Oh, it's okay. It's solar light, probably. I was, you, you know, the next neighbor over has those really nice granite lights on granite posts. Yeah. So I wasn't I mean, sure if you uh, were going in that direction with all yeah, your we're, granite. We're not trying to blow, We're not looking for permission from the planning board for that. I wasn't sure what you yeah. were asking for, yeah. so I just wanted no, to clarify no, no, tonight. No, okay, so there won't be... Excuse me. Go ahead. The, this applicant did have a miscellaneous list of things they were looking at, and uh, the code enforcement officer and I talked about that. And what we came up with is there were certain things that there was no way you could do them without going back to the planning board because they were amendment to the private access way permit. And then there were things that you could do because they were the things that everybody could do. So, for example, if the applicant wanted to put a mailbox in the right-of-way of Shore Road, that's the kind of thing anyone would do. Um, if anyone else would be allowed to put a light by their mailbox, then that would be something that this applicant could do without coming to the planning board. So I just want to make that clear that that's why there's a little bit of ebb and flow on this, that 
Um, the position has been that anything that's in the right of way of the of the private access way, anything that's on the lot needs to come back to the planning board. Things that are outside of the right of way that are between the edge of the right of way for the private access way and the right of way or shore road would be something that you anyone else would work with, usually with the public works director. Okay. So if they change their mind about where they want to put things, they could be right back here. I'm just trying to remember what I heard from the workshop and just trying yeah. to plug it in based on um, what's in front of us. I think that might just be, um, I was just wondering um, if we're going to maybe make a motion about granite posts, you know, because it's not in this motion. And that's why I was asking, are we going to get enough updated plat? I mean, are we just looking to put things in the motion, Maureen, because we're not going to get an updated plat? Or? If the planning board uses the motion that's been drafted, there is a note here that the fence posts be placed at the property corners just inside the property line to avoid disturbing the property pins. And I didn't put a fourth condition, which is usually that the plans be revised before anything else happens. Um, that's probably a good condition to put on there. If you don't put it on there, I'm still going to ask the applicant to revise the plans to reflect whatever conditions you put on the approval. I was thinking that those granite those uh, five, six by six, that's not the same thing as the fence post. Is it is? Yes, it it's is. number three. Oh, it is. Okay. So what they're doing is where you would normally have a fence, you have, you know, the rail and then you have the fence post. Once the fence post hits the corner, they're not going to use a wooden post. They're going to put in a granite post. I didn't. Took me a little while too. Okay. Then my apologies. I'm just I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. Um, how about those iron markers then? Once again, I, uh, are we done deliberating on that? Are we, is yep, everyone on board to go with the iron markers? It's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, iron markers are standard procedure. So I'm just wondering if we want to get... Um, You're talking about the markers at the corners? Or the, what, he's talking about the monuments for the 30-foot setback. Monuments. So that's like a six by six granite. That's, so yeah. that's what I wanted to get: the size, the number, but the placement. Top with with metal, with a piece of rebar or some kind of metal driven through it in the ground, so that you can find it with a metal detector. What would you call those? Just so it's I mean, a surveyor's monument. Yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah. Really it's called a so surveyor's so monument. Okay. Flush, flush with the ground. And where would you place those? I would do the, the five corners okay. of the buffer. And then I would go so far as to put in one in between if you'd like. You know, on, on you know, so you do one. Yeah. And halfway so between. Here, one here, one here, and then maybe we do one in, in the middle. Uh, halfway? I would like that. Do the ones in the middle, is it adding value? Um, again, I mean, if, I mean you're, if you're wondering, let, let's just say that, you know, we're trying to decide if we want to plan a road, you know, if we want to, I, I think that granite monument is really going to serve for like the first two seasons when you establish, you know, your no fly zones, you know, and so it's just going to give them, you know, uh, until they establish the place where it is manicure. Um, it's a place where you can have your buddy stand there and you, you can see the straight line. It's fine. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it, I understand. I just think if it, if it adds any value, but I guess they're not expensive items really either. So. No, I mean, in the scheme of it's not expensive items. Yeah. I mean, we have to go and buy the granite posts alone. Just put them in the Okay. Joe, did you have something more you wanted to say? No, I'm good. As long as I, I prefer having the uh, three along each property line. So you want to do I mean, three along each setback. Yep, so one at each corner and one in the middle. Yep. Cool. So, um, where are we going to add that in our motion? Uh, yeah, I'd like to put it into the motion. I'm trying to make sure that the things that we've discussed get captured in the motion. So, um, so we're asking for four. 
Okay, so that was that's just one main motion, then. number four. Yes, it would add number four. Okay. Maureen is quickly writing. She's writing them too. Okay, I'm just trying to. That's why I'm trying to get the wording. To make sure. Are there any other questions? Go ahead, Peter. No. Uh, Maureen, your memorandum and the draft uh, resolution mentioned no structure within 10 feet of the building envelope. If the building envelope is indeed the setback line, the plans do show that both the house and the barn within that 10 foot area. Am I missing something here? Uh, it would require the plans you're, you're seeing to be slightly modified. Okay. And you actually have that, um, since I gave you guys this, uh, this has been pulled off. But this, this isn't even designed yet. Right. Actually, it's funny. We were going to do the barn first, and then they found that they had one out of twins on the way. So they uh, changed the. They decided focus. they needed a house yeah. first. So the barn is the kind of table, and that they shift a little bit. We don't have a permit for the barn yet, but we do have a permit for that. So you are abiding by the 10 feet yes. inside the uh, setback line of the house. It says on here that uh, no structure shall be we be within 10 feet of the setback. So the, the this is 10 feet right here. The way that we have this right now on the approved permit is four feet out of that boundary. Um, but that was, we pulled it off of there just so we had room for overtake. Mm -hmm. well, this shows one foot set back. Yeah, that, that's going to change the, the, the approved term. Yes, I do. Um, I, I brought this plan because this is the one that, that um, I submitted to you guys. And then when I met with, I had a pre, you know, I sat down with Ben and with the set of plans that we were submitting for the permit before I actually applied for it to make sure that everything was cool. And we talked about that and then we pulled it off. Four feet, and that's on the set of things that we're permitted. Okay, all right. So, as I noted in the memo on page one, that since this was approved in 2015, the planning board has refined its approach to preserving buffers to avoid encroachments. And in the last six months to a year, you've had to deal with multiple issues of encroachments. And one of the most recent ones on Old Ocean House Road you learn that when people put their buildings right on the edge of the building envelope, there is very little expectation that the integrity of the building envelope is going to be respected, that you lose vegetation immediately adjacent to where the building is. Um, in having these conversations with the code enforcement officer, it's his suggestion that if you really do want the building envelope to be the limit of where vegetation is cleared, Structures should be no closer than 10 feet because people need to get in there and they need to have equipment in there. Um, that's why there is a proposed motion for you to consider that says that no structure would be constructed within 10 feet of the building envelope line. It, it, the current plan that is in front of you does not comply with that. So if you were to impose that condition, the plan would need to be adjusted. It does appear that the lot is a very large lot and that there is plenty of room to move the structures so that they are 10 feet away from the building envelope line. But it's your call. Is that a fair statement, though? I mean... Because if we approve this as it's written, you would need to move that another six feet off that line. Is it written or is it proposed? I said if we approved it as it's written here. If we were to approve the motion we have currently. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that the fence is important enough so that we can shift the building. So, so yes. it's not. I just, I just don't, I don't want to approve something tonight without taking into account something that you're already, and, and shooting you in the foot for something that's well, already. Well, to be honest with you, I mean, I think that that's already blasted. So that's the question, basically. Is it already in the works, four foot off that line? It, it, it is. I mean, I, don't, I, I was there at 8 o'clock this morning. I didn't look at I mean, they've got the whole thing scraped off. And there's, I mean, the, it's a big pile of money and rubble out there. I mean, it's a, there's a, the, the land kind of comes up, and the house is sighted on top of that. Um, and so the, we had to carve into that ledge, and actually, the, this terrace sits on, on the highest point of the property. As we move, if we move it the, the, from the descent, as, as 
we shifted forward, you know, you all I understand. You, you and it, the question was, what's the impact going to be? So. Well, so it seems like that this was approved with a 30-foot setback to the building already, and they proceeded on that. So I'm not sure how we could change that at this point. I mean, I kind of feel like if um, if you need to maintain a 10-foot setback from your setback, then you should have, the buffer should be bigger. But to, once you say it's the building envelope, I mean, that's your building envelope. And in my mind, I mean, I'm not trying to I, contest I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not arguing. I just wanted to make it really clear that we don't, to ensure we don't do something that's going to create more problems than it solves. So that's... 30 foot setback, is that's um, not a function of the zone that it's in, right? It's a function of the requirement for the, a buffer. The 30 foot is a mandatory setback for structures in the RA district. But there isn't anything in the RA district that says you can't completely clear out all of the vegetation in that 30 foot setback. You're supposed to keep the building 30 feet away. What the planning board has done when you are reviewing development is that there is also a buffer requirement with new with these lots. And the least expensive way for property owners to meet the buffer requirement is to promise to leave the existing vegetation in place. So that's why your 30 foot setback ends up becoming a 30 foot buffer strip. And when people are blasting at the edge, that means your 30 foot buffer strip becomes a 20 foot buffer strip. When I had this conversation with Ben, and I think it was a condition of our permit, I don't know if you made a note on it, but that we would have, that there was any, I mean, we're not supposed to have construction activity in the buffer, obviously, but if there, if there is any disturbance, there would be repair. And, and Mr. Trout, I, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just reflecting that it's been the planning board's experience with multiple projects that nobody can go that close to the edge of the building envelope without, and, without disturbing the buffer. And then we have someone coming, then Ben has to send you back here with a planting plan. So we're trying to, it's up to the board. How you want to handle that? Go ahead, Peter. Can I ask you, uh, the status quo you've been doing grading, you haven't, you haven't set the foundation, have you? No, um, so far what's happened is that they're right at this 30 foot setback, there's a uh, erosion control which is um, pretty much shredded bark, big amount of shredded bark at the 30 foot setback all the way around the property. And pretty much this whole area is, you know, they made a temporary road in, um, the place has been cleared, and that, and this has all been scraped. And what would keep you from moving your your layout 10 feet? I think you're saying the lead, there's no lead. Yeah, if you move it, then there's no right. leads, right? It, it's going to, it would really would affect how this terrace communicates with that ledge. I mean, that was design intent to site that house up there and, and get that terrace situated in such a way that at most we would 30, we'd have to have the, the worst case, we'd, that terrace would be sitting 30 inches or less off of the ledge, so we wouldn't need a railing, but then we'd be able to expose that ledge. Once you move that building forward, it falls off precipitously, and we're going to lose that opportunity. So you'd have to cantilever your deck off the... No, we have to back up. Mm -hmm. Instead of having natural ledge, we'd, be, we'd have a mound of, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the board for thoughts. Yeah, I am. Sounds like we're going back to, you know, kind of in the, the, the <laughs> ten foot up against it. The 10-foot thing in this in context seems to me maybe we could, well, uh, the barn you could do, right? The barn we can, we can shift, yeah. So it's just the house because of the topography and, Correct. and whatnot. And, uh, and because of timing. If we'd had this conversation a month ago, they wouldn't have lasted yet. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I was a little bit, I didn't know the best timing to do the fence thing because, um, 
But we just didn't. Oh, that wasn't a criticism, it was an yeah. observation. So I'm just. I'm under yeah. pressure to move forward. And um, so we wanted to start the project, so we went ahead and got the permit and started. If well, that area is, is characterized by a ledge, I, it seems to be less likely that it's going to be a more encroachment into the buffer. Um, I, I could live with that, I guess. I think on the, the, the barn, clearly could follow the 10-foot requirement. We could maybe insist on that. Jonathan? I mean, I, I remember when we visited this property for the road construction for the private access permit, and I remember that ledge that you're talking about. It's sort of on that corner of the property and walking up on it, so I understand what you're saying, and obviously on that map you can see the topography. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to think that the 10-foot setback is absolutely necessary, um, but at the same time I say this, and I hope this is all on the record here, is that you're gonna, if, if you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. And if you have to come back for a replanting permit, something that we just did on another property because trees blew down, um, and that person I think is gonna have a pretty expensive um, planting plan, uh, where it was like two for one or something, and they had some pretty, well, I don't think the neighbors were too upset. They seemed pretty understanding about it. Um, but it's the, the applicant needs to know um, that it's a big possibility that they might have to come back um, and you're going to have some neighbors who are will most likely be watching and uh, the town involved too so uh, to me I don't think that the 10 foot um, structures or a 10 foot um, restriction is, is necessary uh, but it's almost like you might want to do it on your own well, the, the thing, the, what I look at here is that um, we have the 10 feet here, and we pulled it back 4 feet, and, I mean, this is the, the least traveled, I mean, these are the least traveled area, all the, all the focus on, you know, living on this property is, is you know, you're drawing it this way. Um, Excuse me, Ben, you pulled the, this gable in 4 feet back? The, the, the whole thing we shifted 4 feet. Oh, okay. So now you're five foot off of this. It's, it's, I'm sorry, we should have taken two feet to four feet off the setback. Now that we've been doing we have to have four feet for both day. So the thing is, you're really talking about this piece, right? The deck is all in sauna tube, so you're not um, creating as much over dig over there. Um, the deck down there. That, that's actually, it says deck, but that's actually part of this. Oh, okay. It actually has foundation below it. So that's also four feet off? Yeah. It's still a fairly small area. I mean, again, that, that buffer zone, you know, is about 30,000 square feet. It's a, it's a lot of area. Right, but your overdig is, in worst case, something like this. Right, just these two areas. There's not going to be any overdig. I'm just saying your worst case, like if the guy is dug too far and you have to go in and replant. Yes. We'd be talking about replanting this and this. Correct. Okay. With, you know, native vegetation. And then I discussed that specifically. I guess I'm okay with the house and we could add the 10 foot setback on the barn so we. That sounds like it's not a problem. Right. I'd be in favor of that. So my thoughts are, um, I have gone to these site walks and I've seen these buildings that, you know, they, somebody has encroached, you know, they do the mowing. And um, in my mind, I know you're saying you've got 30, you know, this 30 foot buffer. But the thing is, if you put your house right up against it and there's a tree growing or something else that's growing, you're going to be like, ooh, that's right on top of the house. We should cut that down. And that's exactly what we're trying to prevent. And just to give you an idea of why 
you're saying, you got the 30, now you're asking for 10 more. And it's because we don't want you cutting down, mowing, going into that buffer, and you put your house right up against it. And if over time, I mean, it'll grow up. You know, that area might be nothing today. Mm -hmm. 10 years from now, it could be very full, and you've got a tree growing right up against the house. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, let's take it down. That's why we want the ten. So, given what has gone on, I'm, I would want the ten. But I, I'll put it in definitely for the barn and the deck. I would like to at least say what is done is done. But I want to give you the reason. I mean, if your house is right up against it and a tree grows, you're going to want to cut that tree down, mm -hmm. and that's what we don't want. But I would like language in there as far as the uh, barn goes, if that's okay with the rest of the board for language on the barn. Yes, that's fine. Okay. So, we, we anything forward. else? Are we ready to? I mean, I, I hate, to, I hate to say this now, and you guys, could, uh, did you guys want a site walk on this, or are you good? Okay, I just, I had to ask. <laughs> I didn't want to ignore it, so. Well, once again, just to try to, so nothing is being sent to the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Is that correct? Because there's mistakes on this plat. And I just want to find out, is it going to the Registry of Deeds or is it not going to the Registry? Because this has already been recorded okay. and we're not proposing to change lot lines, I had no intention of requiring it to go to the Registry of Deeds. Okay. If the planning board wants to require that it be re-recorded, you have the right to do that. I'm sure the board will be as good as I am. I mean, there's there's errors on here. This was uh, this plan was made in 1997. These owners, they're so out of date. You don't even have the name of or the you know you have nothing that shows who the owner is and their lot on on either this document that'll be filed away or this document that'll be filed away and, and I'm just troubled at how old this is, how outdated the information, how even the new owner. It's, the only way I could find out is there was a little note with the last name on here and I would, I'm one for, you know, after this conversation is gone, we may remember what happened, but if anyone was to pull the file, because I've seen, we've gone back and over to the same lots over and over and over. There's nothing on here, and that bothers me. But I'm sure it doesn't bother the rest of the board, but <laughs> no, it bothers I mean, me. That, you know, when they purchased the property, that was what I got. Yeah. You know, they, 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 I was never given another survey beyond that. That was, I got the approved plan to the road. Um, it was like a, there, was a, there was like four or five pages. And, uh, you said there was going to be resurvey. Are surveyors coming back? Well, up? I want to, I want for your benefit. I want you to know that we're going to survey the buffer. And, and just so you know that we're putting the fence in the right spot. You know, I've already had that in put. I already had the surveyor come back and put space every fifty feet on the buffer. Line. Appreciate that. Yeah, and so that is clearly marked. And now we have that erosion control, which is kind of. You know, it's shredded bark, and it's, it's kind of like a little wall around the buffer. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? So I knew they wouldn't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but, uh, yeah. yeah. That was my only other comment then. It just, it bothers me how outdated in the air is, but. Jonathan. I have a motion for the board to consider. Go right ahead. All right. Findings of fact. Alex and Brianne Fisher are requesting am amendments to the private access way granted July 21st, 2015 for a lot located at 1200 Shore Road to add, ins to add the installation of fencing to the allowed activities in the buffer, 30-foot buffer, which requires review under section 19-7-9 private access ways. Two, removal of natural vegetation within the buffer strip must be minimized to preserve the integrity of the buffer strip as a visual screen from other properties. Three, the applicant has demonstrated that a perimeter fence can be installed without removing trees in the buffer strip. Four, the applicant substantially complies with the private access 
Wake Standard, Section 19-7-9. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application for Alex and Brian Fisher for amendments to the private access permit granted for 1200 Shore Road to install a fence along the property line and in the buffer be approved subject to the following conditions. That number one, um, that the barn structure be located 10 feet from the edge of the building envelope. Two, that the extent of driveway and utility installation within the buffer be shown on the plans and be limited to no more than 750 square feet of area disturbed within the buffer. Three, that the fence post be placed at the property corners. placed at the property corners, excuse me, be installed just inside the property line to avoid disturbing property pins. Four, that a flush mounted granite marker with iron posts be installed at the 30 foot setback along each corner and in the middle between each corners of the building envelope. Five, that the plans be revised to satisfy the above conditions and be submitted to the town planner. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, do I have a second? Can I offer a... Uh, I have a second. Okay. You go first. Okay, it's the same thing. Yeah. On the, uh, on the um, point to keep the barn 10 feet back from the setback line? Yes, number one. Number one. Can you put a minimum of 10 feet? Uh, yes, I'd be fine with that friendly amount. What do you, what, what would you need some? A minimum of 10 feet. Yes, that was exactly what I was, I picked up on that. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, do you want to say the barn structure and any other structure permitted after this date? Is that the target yeah. friendly amendment? Yeah. Okay, I'd accept, that'd be acceptable to me. Acceptable to both the, the first and second. <laughs> Anything else? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda is comment on oh, there it is. Uh, comment on items not on the agenda. I'm seeing no one who wishes to comment on items not on the agenda. Do I have another motion? Go right ahead, sir. Move we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Joe seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Thank you. <laughs> they just have that work. Good <laughs> work.